Good day. Welcome to Bootlosophy. Uh, I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I live and work on, the Wajit people of Noongar Buja. Now, today I'm doing something a little bit different again. Uh, I'm not reviewing any boots, but uh, I'm going to talk about the top five things that I do to take care of my boots. So on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram account, which is at TechO, um, a lot of people uh, message me or put a comment in my videos about how I actually take care of my boots. Now, you know, I, 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 I am not a boot expert. Uh, I have grown to uh, understand uh, what boots are like in terms of makeup and how they're made and how to look after them. Uh, but I am in no way uh, a boot expert or a leather expert. However, uh, when people ask me these questions, like how do you take care of your boots, I, I treat it with a little bit of care because I do understand it because I'm on YouTube. People uh, will look at what I say and maybe try and uh, uh, copy what I say. So I have to be really careful and I want to say to you that this is my inexpert uh, personal opinion of how I look after my boots. And if you want to try them, that's fine, but you know, a caveat, this comes from me. <laughs> okay, so let me go through the top five things that I do to care for my boots. The first thing that I do is to brush my boots regularly. And um, regularly, I think, does depend on your use scenarios. How often do you wear your boots? Uh, where do you wear them? Are they in dusty situations? Are they in gritty, dirty, muddy situations? Or are they just in uh, on the sidewalk and going to and from your office and maybe driving? Uh, but whatever that is, I think you still do need to brush regularly, whether it's um, every two or three wears, as in fact what Trickers recommends, or what I generally do roughly once a week if I've been wearing them quite regularly. Um, and the first thing I'd invest in is a good quality horsehair brush. Uh, a fine horsehair brush Apparently, the bristles get into the grain of the leather and, and can actually brush out uh, the boots. Uh, a good horsehair brush like this will look after smooth grain leather primarily, like these Grantstone uh, diesel boots in Saddle Tan. And a good way of brushing, uh, a good vigorous way of brushing, make sure that you're getting rid of dirt and dust uh, and, and the grimy kinds of things from particularly city life, but maybe a dusty trail. Because dust, in effect, is one of the worst enemies of leather and therefore of boots because they can scratch in time. They can uh, act like sandpaper and really damage the leather. So number one is, is to brush. How do you brush? I think a good vigorous brushing is important. So you're doing things like that. I mean, take a look at how a cobbler does it you know, or a shoe shine specialist. So a good vigorous brush like that, right across the boot. And I know it can be quite <laughs> difficult getting a grip and so on. Um, but a good vigorous brush will actually uh, warm up the leather, move the waxes and oils around. And in many instances, particularly with uh, smooth grain boots, really give it a nice burnish. Now, as for, as, sorry, I'm talking away from the camera. As for um, uh, suede boots or rough outs or even wax suede, I'm not sure that I'd use this necessarily. I'd get something similar, but maybe something with a, a stiffer bristle, which I haven't taken out with me. But I'd use that to sort of brush the dirt away uh, from, the, from the welt area and maybe around the seams, because what you want to do is, again, get rid of that dry dirt, dust, and gritty sort of stuff. Um, but... A brush for wax suede or unwax suede, you'd get something like this, which is a suede brush. And on one side, it has rubber bristles so that you can actually get into the welt and sort of clean them out. It's got a little welt cleaner, this bit here, so you can even just put the teeth in. It's, it's rubber, it's soft rubber, flexi. And then it has a set of copper bristles surrounded by plastic bristles. And that's the sort of stuff that you can brush a suede to get the nap to lie down. Uh, you can use it in a wax suede. There's no, there's no problem with that. Um, you, you're not going to necessarily rub off all that wax. 
Um, but certainly when it starts to patina, you can, you can use it uh, to clean it up. So that's step number one. Um, step number two is to condition and protect your leather. Now, why does leather need conditioning? Well, it's skin. It might be dead skin, but it's still skin. And I'm sure you've seen like really old leathers that's been maybe even left out in the sun and the rain and how it cracks and dries up and curls. Um, you don't necessarily want that to happen to your boots, right? You spend a lot of money on them. So you want to make sure they're conditioned like your skin so that it remains supple and smooth and soft. Now, what type of uh, conditioners you use, I think will depend on the types of leathers. So in terms of uh, a Chrome XL in my uh, Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill, um, I'd use something like Venetian Shoe Cream. For a waxier leather, like this um, Oak Street Bootmakers Trench Boot in uh, uh, Natural Dublin, um, I'd use something a little bit waxier. And I think you can do that by the feel of the leather. This actually feels waxy, whereas the Chrome XL um, feels kind of like internally waxy and oily. It's not necessarily sitting on the top. And um, the saddle tan diesel boots, which are from uh, an Italian tannery, Badalassi, um, these are veg tanned, and they actually feel dry and soft. Um, but, but not oily at all. So these can take a, a kind of waxy shoe polish like a uh, Venetian shoe cream conditioner. So in talking about conditioners, my number one for smooth leathers is Venetian shoe cream. It's a sort of creamy, waxy conditioner that you can put on your hand so you can actually feel what they feel like um, when you sort of apply it to the leathers and smooth them in. Um, what you do with that kind of a conditioner is put on a thin smear, maybe a second if the leather's so dry it soaks it up, uh, allow it to haze up as it dries, and then brush them off in the way that I showed you. Uh, same thing for Chrome XL. I do exactly the same thing, Venetian shoe cream, and uh, uh, haze it up and then brush it off. I have two um, balm-like conditioners. One is this old tin of R.M. Williams uh, saddle and leather dressing. And the other one is, a, is an Aussie favorite of mine, Oakwood Leather Care Conditioner. Both of these are balm-like and quite waxy to the touch. And those I find, hmm, lovely eucalyptus smell. Those I find really good for um, the waxier leathers like the natural Dublin. And you can also use these or, or even the Venetian shoe cream on wax leathers and waxed rough outs because it will protect it and condition it and not necessarily um, re-wax it, which you'd have to do uh, with an actual heavier kind of wax uh, coating and, and uh, a heat gun to sort of melt it in. So what next? Um, number three. That's the cleaning and the conditioning. And by the way, if you do want to protect them with a little bit of water resistance, the saddle tan veg tan, for example, is not particularly waterproof. So when this gets wet, it does have um, splotchy dark bits, which scare the crap out of you. But as they dry, then they come back to the normal. But what you might want to do is put on a thin smear of um, a wax polish, neutral, uh, and then just brush and buff it up. So, um, sorry, I was starting to talk about number three. Uh, number three is when you're not wearing the shoes, use shoe trees. So I have three examples over here. And I think any one of these would do. Um, this one, though, I treat with some caution because the, the way you use this is you push it into the vamp of the boot and then this curls up and pushes against the uh, heel counter um, to push this forward. If your leathers, or particularly your heel counter, isn't stiff enough, I find that this can deform your boot. I, I'm not a big fan of this one. This is uh, another popular one that you'll find. is It's sort of spring-loaded. And as you push it into the boot and slip this bit on, some of them have a different ending over here. They might just have a wooden, wooden uh, uh, sort of heel replica. 
um, as you push it in, push it on, the tension is created by the spring. And what happens is you actually push that a little bit wider so that it um, fits into the shape of your uh, toe box. My favorite, however, um, is this one, which is uh, sprung that way. So you can slip it in and push it in. And it has a little, uh, little toe spring. So that keeps it apart when it's actually in the boot. Whichever one you use, make sure you use a wooden one. Uh, specifically, if you can get them, they're a little bit more expensive, cedar. Because cedar smells really nice. It absorbs the sweat from your uh, boots. Uh, and it, it um, really creates quite a nice smell and, and antifungal effect in there. So, uh, boot trees. Uh, number four, it's not actually a care process, but it is a procedure and it is to rotate your boots. You really shouldn't wear your boots every day. Two or three days, maybe that's fine, but then give them at least a day, if not, if you want them for two or three days, if not a couple of days rest and put something else on. So you should at least rotate your boots um, and preferably a different boot a day. So if you have two pairs of boots, go Monday boot one, Tuesday boot two, and so on. And um, the reason for that is that leather is a living, breathing thing. So as your feet sweat in it, and you might not realize this, um, that sweat does get absorbed inside the boot. Now, if you wear that every day, that could cause fungal issues. But not only that, that could really damage the leather because it gets weakened through the moisture. So um, item number four is to make sure that you rotate your boots every day. Now, finally, step number five, um, I call this, I guess, another procedure is uh, once in a while, you don't have to do it like every week or every month, but once in a while, whenever you pull your boots on, inspect your boots. What you're looking for are a few things. One is look at heel wear. Now, these are reasonably new, so you can see there's no heel wear. But you see the thickness of that rubber top lift? This is called a top lift. That's called the heel stack, just there. See that rubber top lift and how thick that is? If these were an old pair of boots, it is possible that you wear this section down because that's where you have your heel strike. It's possible that you wear this heel section down really, really um, a lot. And it's also possible if you're not careful, you start wearing it into the heel stack. The idea is to make sure that you understand where it's got to. And before it gets to the heel stack, go and see your cobbler. I call um, item number five, use a professional. So make sure it doesn't cut into the heel stack, get that uh, top lift replaced. The other place to look at is the uh, 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 top of the heel, uh, top of the toe, uh, because that's the other place that as you walk off, uh, wears out, especially, especially leather soles. If you look at that, can you see that I'm wearing the edge off? And I'll turn it this way around, might be a bit easier. Can you see that I'm beginning to actually get into the midsole? So that's the outsole, and then that's the midsole, and that's the welt. Now, if you wear your outsole off, that's fine. You can always replace that. If you start to wear into your midsole, that's problematic because it means you're going to have to replace the midsole as well as the outsole. If you ever wore into the welt, you're in deep poo because you're going to have to replace the welt. And despite a good welted boot being resolable, there are degrees of difficulty in resoling your boots. Uh, and if you get into the welt and you want to replace that, that's going to cost you a lot of moolah. So be aware of the wear. You can put toe taps on, those brass things that you sometimes see, Triumph toe taps. Um, and I will put them on these very soon. I did not put them on these new because one of the things I did want to do is figure out where the wear was going to be because I don't want to put a toe tap there and it starts wearing over here. So um, wear it for a little while, figure out where your, where your wear is going to be and maybe uh, put a toe tap on. So those are the things I'd look for in terms of then uh, uh, getting to a professional to, to fix those issues. Now, another one, these are casual boots and they're really <laughs> brand new. Um, but um, the, th the other thing you're looking at is maybe wear patterns. 
And if your boots have been dry and you've ignored rule number two, which is condition your boots, and they start to dry and crack, you might want to get that seen to very quickly. Because um, if, you, if you wear through and crack leather at the, at the creases, it, you may not come back from that. So the lesson in item number five is be aware of what your boots look like and how they're worn and immediately, earlier than later, go and see a professional. <laughs> I say earlier than later because if you went and repaired, say, that top lift before it wears into the heel stack, you're only going to pay in Australia probably about $20 if that. Um, if you then started to wear into the heel stack, and what the cobbler has to do is remove the top lift and then remove the leather in the heel stack and replace the leather in the heel stack and then color the edge, you know, that's going to start costing you a lot. So if you do it early, 20 bucks, that might well save you 75, 80, 100 dollars. Same thing goes with that, of course, because if you imagine replacing a leather sole could be quite pricey, but then replacing a leather sole, a leather midsole, and a leather welt could be monstrous. So earlier rather than later. Um, so there you have it, guys. Um, a, a, a summary is that if there's any expense going to be spent on your boots, do it now in small cumulative sums. Uh, go and buy yourself a, a good conditioner, which this one is actually quite expensive, but um, spread out over multiple boots, over multiple wares, uh, you're not going to have a problem spending that money and spreading it out, as opposed to spending three times that much having to repair your leather. And the same thing goes for brushing and wear and care. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Please don't ask me anymore how I take care of my boots. <laughs> I will keep referring you to this video. So you know what to do now. Uh, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button, and uh, take care, and I'll see you in my next video.